If you start calling these bullies out and saying what you're doing is messed up, you're going to make them feel stupid, make them feel small, and then they will see the, th the asshole that they are. So sometimes we have to just start calling stuff out. We can't be... I studied my major was psychology to talk about the bystander effect where people they just sit around and because nobody the bystander effect is where people a bunch of people are witnessing something happen and they don't want to intervene because if nobody else is intervening they don't want to intervene somebody but somebody got to be the hero the heroine of the day somebody got to be the hero somebody got to be the one that's gonna like step up to the plate and do something that nobody else is gonna do because I guarantee you, when one person steps up, you're going to have other people backing you up. Because somebody else probably wants to say something, but they are afraid to. But when they see you being brave, like I'm telling you, being brave and defending somebody that's being picked on, you probably are going to have other people come step in. Because this is how we can stop abuse. This is how we can stop. It's because we got to just be more of a community. And I'm telling you, the autistic people are the most greatest people you can ever have in your community. They are so sweet, so pure, will love you deeper than everybody else will ever love you. And it's like autistic people deserve so much better, bro. And I just love the fact that we have this community. I love TikTok. I love how we are able to be able to find out what is really going on because every single autistic person that is a late diagnosed, we knew something was off about us. We knew something was different, but we just could not put our finger on it. And when we found out that we were autistic, it was like a humbling relief. Yes, it definitely humbled me. It was like, wow, so I really do have a disability. Wow, okay. That was humbling. But at the same time, it was a relief because I'm like, at least I know that there's a root cause to what's been going on. I, I guarantee you, bro. We deserve so much better. We deserve so much better. We didn't been through too much. And now this is our season of justice where we are coming out to the forefront to know that this is why we have been struggling so much. And that every single person that... Like, it's like my own family didn't even believe that I was on the spectrum. Like, they think like, oh, you can't do that. And it's because it's the people that abused me are the ones that are mad at the fact that they know that I'm autistic now. Because now that's they're going to have to self-reflect themselves and think, well, I really took advantage of a person with a disability. That makes them the asshole. They don't want to be seen as the asshole. So they rather deny your autism to protect their ego. And that ain't right, bro. Not at all. Hold on, let me see this, because we see y'all comments. <sighs> oh, you're welcome for the video. No fear. Oh, thanks. You said I love your videos. They give me so much hope. See, those comments keep me going. That's what makes me know that I got to keep doing what I'm doing. Yes. A black woman, wise. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I could could not really understand the question. Okay, so the thing is, is like a person. The thing is, the can an autistic person be also narcissistic? Yes, I believe so. Because what can happen is autistic people are known to like absorb the energy of their environment. They adapt to the, their environment around them. And when they are surrounded by narcissism and narcissism is how they were brought up and raised, they could believe that that's what they have to gravitate towards. You know what I'm saying? But it takes for an autistic, it takes for a person to self reflect and, and like really step outside themselves and really look at themselves to see. So usually if you see a person that like, when you see an autistic person that's also very narcissistic, they probably came from a narcissistic family and they did not do the internal work to heal. They just adopted to their environment. They had all these issues. They had all of these, um, these behavioral patterns on how they, they handle things. And they just went along with what people have said to them and told them. And they, that's what they feel is correct. Like autism runs in the family. Bro, and it's like you got an off, yeah. So it can happen. It can happen. They just adopted to the environment, adapted, adapted to the environment, not adopted. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and it's, it sucks. It really sucks when you look back and you realize, because a lot of us, we, we look back at our childhood and we think, why did people bully us so much? Why was it every single time I went to a new place, people just started to bully? Or even it'll be new kids will come in to the school in the middle of the school year and the new kids will start picking on me and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck, bro? And to know that it was be, it's because we are autistic and people can see that and they just think, oh, it's fun to mess with this person. They gonna get their karma because they gonna find some people that's gonna start picking on them and bullying them and abusing them. And they gonna be like, well, it's fun to do this to you. It's like, you know, she was on the other foot now. Now you, you done dish it out, can't take it. Now you see how it feel. Yeah, they can have like narcissistic traits because they adapted it, but they're, they may not be like a full fledged narcissist. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. And sometimes like they can get so stuck, especially when they get older, my ear is ringing, when they get older and they can just get so stuck in their ways and they don't believe in mental health. So they haven't, you know, looked to see how they can fix themselves or heal themselves. That's why they stay stuck in that cycle. They're probably an undiagnosed autistic and just have these narcissistic tendencies. Yeah, but I don't belong. Yes, bro. That'd be the thing. Like. Autistic people feel like we don't even fit in with our own families, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's a it's a disservice to autistic people when their own families are their bullies, when their own parents, you know, don't even they can tell that something is different about their child, but they don't want to inquire. They don't want to learn more about the child to figure out what's going on. They just kind of just send their kids off to somebody else, send them to school or send them to daycare, send them to that. So they don't have to deal with them. And then what's going to happen is later on in life when they kids are grown and they have all these issues and they're like, you're grown, you're supposed to figure this out. But you wasn't there when your child was growing up to try to, you know, help develop them. A lot of these parents were more so providers, not parents. They were guardians, not parents. These, a lot of these parents, they... They didn't even, narcissistic parents, they didn't even love their children. They just love controlling their children. Hear me when I say this. A lot of these narcissistic parents did not love their children. They just loved controlling their children. They love the control. They love the power. They love that I have a person that I can control to do everything that I want to do. And they don't have to, they can't question me, but I can, I can say, well, I'm your parent, so I get to do this. Those people don't have, that don't have control over their own life. And they don't have any goals or aspirations or things that they want to do. So they just live through their children. That ain't right. And a lot of times you really going to see. Well, I'm already showered and everything. Okay, well, I'm leaving out now, so I'm going to be on my way. All righty. Yeah. I ain't going to be on this lab too much longer because we got a family picnic going on today, and I'm going to go to that. Usually I don't go. Usually I just kind of like just shy away from everything. But I'm like, you know what? Even if sometimes my family don't make me feel welcome, even if like I haven't felt welcome with my family my whole entire life, they outcast me or whatever, I still have family members that love and accept me for who I am. Okay? I still got cousins that love me. I still got, you know, uncles that like, I got an uncle that tell me I'm his favorite niece. I love him. You know what I'm saying? He lives in a different state. So, and he's in town. So I'm like, beautiful. Like, I'm not gonna, I was telling myself today, I'm like, I'm not gonna let the devil steal my joy. So that's why I came on here to tell y'all, do not let the devil steal your joy. The devil wants you to be isolated. The devil, like, listen, this ain't, if you're in a, like a season of isolation and you working with God, okay, that's a different story. But sometimes even when you are in your season of isolation, it's okay for you to step outside and go do some stuff and have some fun and experience life. And, you know, like, have good experiences. It's okay to do that. It's okay to go and have fun. It's okay to live in the moment. Like, don't spend so much time in your isolation that you stop living. And that's something that I did over the past couple of years. I was just in my isolation phase and I stopped living. I stopped living in the moment. I stopped having fun. And then I realized, you know, I'm not trying to do that. I want to live. I want to experience joy. I want to have fulfillment. It's summertime, baby. We need to be outside having fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, look, it won't hurt me to do one cooking. Like, this is the end of the summer. You know what I'm saying? People finna go back to school and stuff like that. Go ahead and go have some fun. Go ahead and go have some fun. I'm not gonna allow for certain family members that I don't really mess with like that to prevent me from having fun because I can still have a good time. 
I'm telling you, I'm black. We got a big ass family. So it'd it be hella people that I can talk to. Hella people you can move around in. You know what I'm saying? We finna be in a forest preserve, not at somebody's house, in a forest preserve. I have plenty of places to move around. And another thing about this is that sometimes when you are around, when we like around like a big ass group like that, those toxic family members, they ain't gonna show their ass. They ain't gonna show their shoe colors around that time because they don't want nobody to see them. They stay that up behind closed doors. But when you're around a group of people, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna be showing their shoe colors. They ain't gonna be acting like how they act. The only how they may do this, they may say, hey, come here, come here, let me talk to you. And then when he